Blink, blink, ding, bling. Ding, 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 Mm. To Ho yeah Podcast. Hey, Amy. Hey, Shug. <laughs> hey, Shug. And hello to all the Shugs that are listening or watching us. Mm-hmm. Or watching. We're also, we have a very special episode today. Uh, and mm-hmm. if you're on our Patreon... You're going to see this video and you're going to be like, what What in the heck, man? We already got a terrible video of these two. <laughs> Just, it was a nightmare. Now we have another one. Uh, yeah, but, why are they doing this to us again? Yeah, well, first of all, shut your mouth. But second of all, it's a good thing, okay? <laughs> we, just yesterday, we did an interview with Ashley Gardner from King of the Hill who does Nancy Gribble and Reverend Stroop and Dee Dee. Oh, <laughs> it was amazing. And that's what this episode is going to be. It's not our regular uh, following the, the series. This is an interview with Ashley friggin Gardner. And we could not be more excited for everyone to hear it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that we'll get these interviews, but we won't tell anyone about them until after they're done because we're just so sure that either it's going to be a disaster or Mm -hmm. especially in this case that it's probably just a catfish and it's not really her. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We, We were not sure up until like she popped up on the screen and, and not anything against her at all. It was simply because, you know, I mentioned it in the when we're when we're talking to Ashley but we got a DM and on on our Instagram and it just said hey I'm I'm married to the real Nancy Gribble and I was like oh hey Dale haha <laughs> sure <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> I'm so sure <laughs> and then I started to I was like but wait a second maybe this actually maybe this guy actually is married to Ashley Gardner so you know I was like, well, if this is true, could you please let her know that we love her? And if she was ever interested on in talking to us and coming on the show, we would be honored to have her. And he was like, yeah, sure. She's sitting right next to me. So, you know, it and said, then it was just like, OK, this is definitely a catfish then. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't believe it. I still don't believe it. But then as we started emailing back and forth, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe we're doing this. This is going to happen. And she, yeah, she came on yesterday and talked to us and was super gracious and kind and funny. And we couldn't have asked for anything, anything better. It was amazing. It was amazing and terrifying. I mean, we, we had been uh, talking about this for weeks Mm -hmm. and just so nervous. And I was so nervous the whole night before I just could not sleep. So I ended up getting out of bed and just doing some work and editing until like five in the morning. And then I finally went back to sleep and I figured, you know, I'll sleep for a few hours. I'll wake up probably like late around 10 or 11 and then I'll get ready for our interview with Ashley Gardner at three 30. And then my I get in bed, my eyes shut, cut to like my husband shaking me awake. It's 3.15 in the afternoon and he's just like, Amy's trying to get a hold of you. You have an interview with Ashley Gardner in 15 minutes. And it was such a nightmare. <laughs> I was just in the bathroom, like brushing my teeth, trying to put makeup on, just like, ah. when I get really nervous and upset, I like get gassy. So I was just like, belching a lot and just like (laughs) just rushing around like a maniac and then finally I plopped myself down and we immediately got on with Ashley but thank god one it was really her and thank god she was so lovely to talk to because everything before that was chaos 
It was terrifying. I <laughs> I woke up, you know, I, I woke up at like, you know, nine or whatever. I just kind of slept in a little bit and I sent a couple messages to Jackie like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. And I didn't hear anything back for a little while. I'm like, okay, well, that's not, you know, uncommon. Like she's probably busy. And then like noon rolled around and I was like, Jackie, I need you to talk to me. I'm, I'm nervous. I need to know you're here. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. And then like, it's like two, two thirty. I'm talking to our friend Marina. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I haven't heard from her. I was like, I hope she's okay. And if she's okay, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> and then finally it was like two 45 and I was like, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I'm going to have to do this interview alone. I'll do it. But I can't believe it. So I text Will. I'm like, hey, Will. So is Jackie okay? Because we're, we're interviewing Ashley Gardner in 40 minutes. <laughs> and he was like, oh, fuck. She's still asleep. And I just left the house. I'm going back now. And I was like, ah. So I immediately slammed a beer. <laughs> And then I was okay. And then I was like, I get a text message from Jackie at 3.15. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't panic. We're going to be okay. Let's not panic. We'll save the panicking for afterwards. Let's just, we're going to get into this. We're going to do it. It's going to be great. And it really was great. Thank God. It was, again, she couldn't have been more kind and generous to us. So <laughs> even though we had a rough start, the actual interview was amazing. Thank you god and i'm again i'm so sorry <laughs> uh, it's all right i was like i know she feels bad it's okay <laughs> it felt like one of those bad dreams where you wake yeah. up and you're late but then you show up for the interview and you're topless or so and your teeth fall out <laughs> it was one of those i know i said well i know how i feel just waking up late to go to work like the job that i've been to I've been at for six years. Like my boss is very lenient. Like she would be understanding that feeling alone is panic, you know, inducing. I, I, I was like, I know she's freaking out. Let's, I'm not going to add to this. Let's, I was like, it's okay. We got this. <laughs> so, so yeah. So the interview that all of that chaos preceded the interview. Think, I hope it doesn't spill over <laughs> into the interview. I don't think I was screaming or anything. I think I was normal. And <laughs> yes, you were great. Yeah, you did a great you job. You were great too. Thank God for you. <laughs> I think I think we did great. <laughs> so everyone, you're welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. But you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna do any more preamble. We're not gonna do listener shout outs or anything like that. We wanna get right into the interview. And then after the interview, we'll come back and we will have um we, we asked you guys for some of your favorite Nancy moments, so we're going to read a little bit of those and, yeah, get ready for the interview. It's coming up, like, in right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. here it comes. Now. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. How are you? How are you? <laughs> good, good. How are you guys? Doing all right. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure. My pleasure. So excited. Yeah, we're so excited. You know... <laughs> So I'm Amy, just so Hi. you know. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm Jackie. Jackie. Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet <laughs> and you. And you're Ashley. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Ashley, uh, I got how this even started. You know, it was so funny because your husband sent us a message on Instagram <laughs> yeah, and said, I'm married to the real Nancy Gribble. And I was like, all right, buddy. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure you yeah. are. And then when we, I was like, wait a second, there might be some truth to this. So I'm so happy that we, you know, we were able to follow through and get you, get you on the podcast. Yeah, indeed. When did you guys <laughs> yes. start doing this? Just a little over a year ago, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. What, what, uh, what was our one year was uh, August 28th? 25th. Mm -hmm. August 25th. 25th. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So we started just a year ago and, um, and then, of course, quarantine hit halfway through. So that really, yeah. I feel like, helped us focus on it even more because we oh, were all stuck good. at home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. What else were we going to do except just talk to each other all day yeah. long? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's so, great. Well, you guys look kind of young. I'm surprised that you, uh, you know, because the it started in 96. So you must, were you watching it when you were, when you were young, when you were little kids? Well, I think I was, 
I was probably um, in elementary school then, but uh, it, we're not as young. We definitely <laughs> turned up uh, the blur, adjust your appearance on Zoom. So <laughs> I need that. Where is it? That's kind of you to say. I know. Yeah. I was telling everyone. I was like, if you go into your settings. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I was in elementary school and I was watching it, but it, it's one of those things where it's funny on all these different levels where, yeah, it's funny and, and there are funny moments, but then as you get older, there are all these like kind of deeper, yeah, funnier, layers. more ironic moments that you don't even realize until later on. So mm-hmm. it's just kind yeah. of been like a show that you can come back to and see through new eyes at, like every few years. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, I was, uh, I didn't watch it when it first came out because I was probably also in middle school. I was in elementary middle school. Uh, I'm 32 now, Uh, Mm -hmm. but I started watching it when it started to play on Adult Swim. So Mm -hmm. probably like later 2000s, like 2008, 2009. And, you know, again, being older, I was like, oh, okay, now I actually get more of the jokes and why it's so funny then started watching it when it was on Netflix for a while and back on Hulu. So that, yeah, I've been, I was, I definitely didn't watch it when I was younger, but I have for about the last 10 years. Oh, cool. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So um, we'd love to talk about your time on the show and your experiences. Oh, it was uh, my favorite job ever. I was, bitterly disappointed <laughs> when, they, when they canceled us um even though you know kathy that last season when we knew we were being canceled we were all upset about it of course mm-hmm. and kathy was the only one among us who was like guys we got 13 seasons out of this like no that doesn't happen <laughs> um and she's True. right but we weren't ready to go so that was a sadness but the show was um fantastically written um I think the first, so the pilot episode, I remember, you know, getting it and reading it and crying at the end. There was something that, there was such heart. And I I remember, um, you know, I knew Mike Judge, I knew who Mike Judge was I because of Beavis and Butthead, but mm-hmm. that was in my head, Beavis and Butthead. So right. I thought, well, this is going to be like that, I guess. And it, mm-hmm. you know, couldn't have been further from <laughs> Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Right, right. Um, but it was, yeah, it was uh, a, a great job. And I actually tested for um, uh, Brittany's role. Mm-hmm. And it was between the two of us. And I thought, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. This is a regular. This is going to be so great. And my agent called and she was like, they didn't choose you. And I, I laid down on my living room floor and started crying. I was so Aww. sad. <laughs> I was just like, ah. And about and so we hung up. And about thirty minutes later, she called back and she said, "Well, they really love you though." And there's this part of Nancy, and she's married to one of the regulars. Would you be interested in taking that on? And I was like, "Yeah, sure, I guess." Mm. So, <laughs> but so, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jackie. Oh, I'm sorry. There, that's interesting, though, because we did uh, previously talk to Wes Archer, and he did mention that um, we were talking about Brittany Murphy, and he did mention that it was between her and one other person, but he didn't say that it was you. So that's <laughs> that's pretty interesting. I'm so glad yeah. that you ended up making it on as Nancy, because she did end up becoming such a big part of the show and yeah. such an amazing character. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were, uh, we actually just did a little mini sewed with one of our listeners that's, you know, they subscribe to our Patreon. So part of that is like, we, we talk to them for a little bit and do a mini sewed and they wanted to talk about the women on rainy street and how well written these women were for the show. Like how, how well the writers wrote these women. And mm-hmm. we got on the topic of Nancy and how she like, she grows through the show so much and she's got like this, it starts off with her just being in this, you know, extramarital affair with John Redcorn, but then she, she leaves John Redcorn to be with Dale, to stay committed to him. And it goes from there. She even like goes to Dallas and becomes this big time news reporter, but you know, she, she comes back to her family again, 
even though yeah. she had these two opportunities to really go a different direction, but it really brought her back to, you know, Rainy Street and her family. Yeah, yeah. We did that spend was... a lot of time talking about uh, Nancy and just, it, it's one of those characters that it, it, you don't think too much about their growth until you really take a look at it. And that character mm-hmm. could have been written a certain way, like, oh, she cheats on her husband. That's her thing. But yeah. it, I like that the writers made her, that wasn't her defining characteristic and people, she wasn't written in a way where you hated her. That was just like their situation that they had going on. And I don't know if it was meant to be written this way, but I've really come to love the relationship that Nancy has with both John Redcorn and Dale. Mm -hmm. And when the three of them are working together in an episode, it's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. I just love their relationship together. And it's just, it was just really interesting to see how they were able to write this character in a way where it doesn't make you sad. It just makes you happy and you just love everyone. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) How they interact. So they handled that so well because I mean, you know, somebody who's in a long-term extramarital affair like that, you, that, 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 I don't know, you know, you just, as an audience member, you might be prone to go, ew, what, what is this? Why, right. why, but they somehow made it so that it was palatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So easily, um, readily accepted it. Just like, oh, okay. That's, that's how their family works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I was, I was kind of happy when, when they, you know, they came to me and they were like, we're going to ditch this. We're going to, we're going to have to like move on from you being, you know, this has been a long time. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah, good. I think that's going in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I watched, uh, I watched Nancy boys just, uh, just this morning uh, before the, before us chatting. Cause I just wanted to have that fresh in my mind. And it really is such a great episode with, Nancy, you know, re-falling in love with Dale and, you know, and then Dale and John Redcorn having this relationship together where they're becoming friends and yeah. it just ends in such a beautiful way where everybody's still friends and it didn't have to implode their marriage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Dale still never knew. So, you know, I wanted to ask you about that. Do yeah. you, because we were thinking, you know, we've, we've done a couple minisodes and I like to think that on an extremely subconscious level, Dale yeah. did know, mm-hmm. but the but acknowledging it or actually, you know, understanding it would have just completely torn his psyche up apart. <laughs> well, and also, you know, for all of Dale's um, conspiracy theory stuff, he's an innocent, and he and he can't take in the, the sort of the badness of the world in that way, even though he's always like looking for, for the weird thing that's going mm-hmm. on. He doesn't really believe that things are, people are bad, especially mm-hmm. Nancy. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Always, always talking about how, you know, pure and true and wonderful Nancy is. And that's like part of the joke where he just, he just does not see he it. Just when doesn't it's see it. <laughs> so obvious to everyone else. Yeah. Except for yeah. Peggy. Except for, right, except for Peggy. Poor <laughs> Peggy. I know. Peggy. I know. Peggy and Dale are uh, similar in that way, I guess. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, we were, you know, we previously we previously spoke with uh, Kathy, Kathy Najimy, mm-hmm. and she had mentioned about, you know, like. I would love to do this again. I would love to have a reboot of the show. And I was, you know, we're curious to know what you would think about doing a reboot and being a part of it again. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? There's a rumor (laughs) flying around. Yes. Um, A couple of years ago now, I guess, I'm trying to remember when it was. And I was so excited. Are you kidding? Because my, my career, my on-camera career, pretty much died when I was like 43, 44, mm. which is, you know, pretty consistent with Hollywood and how they feel about um, actresses aging. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of didn't notice that it was going on because I had Canada Hill at that point and I had two young children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, when we got canceled in 2008, I was 47. And um, suddenly I was like, oh my God, I have, mm-hmm. I have nothing. Like there's no auditions for me. There's nothing. And I have a, I have a long, you know, (laughs) career resume and stuff. So Mm -hmm. that was a shock. And um, so I would love for it to come back. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, it, there's still rumors going around. I actually just saw another article just from a couple weeks ago where it's like, where's the King of the Hill reboot? Because really, I, well, you, again, rumors, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I know, I know even less than anybody else. So, but uh, just from what I've seen, but it, it makes sense to me because of the resurgence of King of the Hill, like from it being on Hulu and just seeing how excited people are about uh, King of the Hill and watching it and more people discovering it. Again, you know, like I said, we were really young when it first came out, but as we got older, we rediscovered it and realized this is an absolutely brilliant show. It's hilarious. It's got a lot of heart. We would, you know, we love it. So I think that, you know, it being on Hulu again and people being able to stream and watch over and over and over again and really want to see it and see where everybody from Rainy Street is at, you know, in the future. I I have my fingers crossed that it will come back. I really do. All right. Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People always seem to find a reason to come back to King of the Hill. Um, with the election year coming up, there's been like a huge debate on who Hank Hill would vote for. And then yeah. I feel like any time, uh, especially 2020, there's been just like an influx of new Dale memes, just some quote from him about how the world's ending or how the government's responsible for whatever. And yeah, right. <laughs> it's just anytime something like that happens, people always seem to like go back and pick something from the show. So I feel like it's in everyone's mm -hmm. mind and it just keeps coming up and yeah i just keep seeing all these new rumors and articles not just this year but for the past several years about like is a reboot finally happening and yeah. it'll be an yeah. article from like 2010 and i'm like oh uh, <laughs> that got me excited for a second damn it <laughs> yeah oh nothing happened from that i guess oh, I yeah, can't, I that. <laughs> maybe the next one yeah but it does seem to be something that people are always talking about and i mean what better time than now when yeah. you're trying to create new content and no one can be near each other might as well yeah, yeah. true true I, the only problem I foresee is that we, you know, we lost two big characters. Yes. Um, and I don't know how they'd handle that. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I don't know how to turn that off. Uh, yeah, so, because I, I don't, yeah, I don't think that we would want to kill Brittany. Right. Um, that seems to be agreed upon because of course that's yeah. part of the conversation too. Everyone's like, no, we'll just make them live the next the other the next town over. So like no one wants to see them get killed off. But it is something that's everyone yeah. is mm -hmm. trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. Especially because yeah. they had a daughter. So they're, you know, like does the daughter live with Hank and Peggy now? Kind of like oh how Luann did. About the <laughs> yeah, yeah, little Gracie. <laughs> right, right. Amy, you're giving me goosebumps. Wow. The daughter. The daughter, I totally forgot. About. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see, you know, because Peggy and uh, Hank take in Luann, maybe, you know, they would take in Gracie, the sure. her, their daughter. Um, but I, I would love to know if you, you know, I know this is, you know, we were just talking about the reboot, but if you, if you were in it, how would you? Where do, you, where do you foresee the Gribbles and Nancy? Would they be, would she be in a thruple with John Redcorn and Dale? Because that's my dream. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think the thruple thing would go over very well, especially after what happened to Katie Hill. Yeah. No, no, I don't think that would be happening. Damn it. Yeah. I don't know where they are. Gosh, I, I, that, that's an interesting question too. It's sort of like, well, you know, what's the time lapse? Because right. They, we never, we all stayed the same. Of course, mm -hmm. there was no. It was it was a universe that never aged. Right. Um, so is that the case with a reboot? That we're mm -hmm. just all in the same universe, right? Same time frame, or or do we, you know, have to move forward? Somehow? 
Yeah, I guess I'm imagining it being in the future. You know, like mm-hmm. it, maybe maybe Joseph and Bobby are college aged, or because I guess that's probably where they would be now. Like they yeah. would definitely be in in their college years if at not least. Out of college, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I didn't go to college. I don't know what age. <laughs> <laughs> You're 22. Oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> um, so I figured they would be a little bit older. <laughs> We also, you know, again, we did another mini, so we talked about Joseph, and I thought, I asked, you know, I wonder if he would ever figure it out that John Redcorn is his biological father, and I would, I would assume he would. So I wonder, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, so that was, in the term of a reboot, I, I really think about, like, Nancy and Dale and John Redcorn and, and Joseph, because... It, you know, as people get older, they, you know, become a little bit more aware. So I thought yeah. maybe Joseph would connect the dots where Dale didn't. Yeah. Yeah. He might. <laughs> <laughs> I can spell trouble for Nancy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, right. as, as, yeah, I think that's why I get a little bit nervous. Part of me is like, I don't want to hear Bobby with a deeper voice. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> and I don't want Joseph to be too old that now he's like gotta know i i want to find like that sweet spot but but <laughs> i'll take what i can get for sure yeah. um but as far as nancy goes i i wonder sometimes i wonder you know how what would her career look like you know is she an anchor now or um i don't know what yeah, yeah. i'd like to think yeah. she would be yeah, yeah. she was she, I think she was kind of heading that way, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, um, I mean, you know, it's you had mentioned about Hollywood and ages and everything, and I think they even kind of included that in the show where Nancy yeah. was getting too old, quote unquote, to be the weather girl. And right. there was that whole uh, episode with Nancy trying to figure that out and be like an anchor. So, yeah, I would, I would see... I mean, we were saying Nancy is ambitious. When she went to Dallas, she took it over. I think that she would be running that Arlen station if she was there. <laughs> yeah, especially if they got her the Doppler radar that she so wanted. Yeah, <laughs> not, the not fax just a fax machine. machine. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh. Um. I also wanted to mention because you you did a lot of voices on the show, and um, th- some of the big ones that we adore would be Reverend Stroop and <laughs> Dee Dee. We, you know, Dee Dee doesn't get enough uh, respect or love from people. She is absolutely hilarious. I never liked what I did with Dee Dee. Um, <laughs> well, really? Yeah, I, I really thought that I didn't have a very good handle on my character. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and she didn't get a lot of play, you know, she, I mean, mm-hmm. she did. And then, and then the cotton thing went, right. so. Um, but, uh, I loved Reverend Stroop. Yes. And, um, that was, that was an interesting, um, Mary Tyler Moore did the original one, but I had, I had read the script. I, mm-hmm. I read, they had told me I was doing it. Right. And then they called and said, we're replacing you with Mary Tyler Moore. I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> what a phone call. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we know the studio wants us to get, uh, you know, celebs when we can. And I was like, right. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, she did it. I guess she did such a great job. I don't know if I watched that episode. I can't remember. But <laughs> they were like, okay, we're taking you back. <laughs> You're back. It's Reverend Stroop. I'm like, great. Yeah. Yeah. We love Reverend Stroop. Um, there's the the episode. It, it it drives me nuts because it's a it's a Bill heavy episode where he just blows it completely with Reverend Stroop. Like they oh, start right. dating, yeah. and and I know that it's intended. Like Bill is supposed to forever be alone. You know, like he just he's not supposed to be with someone. So that whole episode where they have that secret lit relationship and then she's like well i'm gonna move in with you and we're together forever now and he just totally blows it uh, <laughs> it's just like oh bill yeah right <laughs> reverend stroop is a good woman what are you doing oh no i know I he, dated a lot of, he dated a lot of like uh, women on both ends of the spectrum for sure but i mean like between reverend reverend stroop is definitely on like the better end towards ann richards and the, and <laughs> Yeah. He just can't seem to find a balance between 
the women. They're either incredibly successful or and intelligent and amazing, or they're trying to murder him in his sleep. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's <clears throat> it's interesting to hear you say that about Dee Dee too, because I think she's another. There are just so many funny moments in like. There's not a moment that goes by that it feels like they haven't inserted something funny. So for the characters we don't see that often it's easy to overlook them at first but the more we've watched the show over the years the more I've come to really appreciate Dee Dee and even though you don't see a lot of her just uh I've I've come to just love her a lot and quote her a lot and I love her voice and the things she says are just so funny but it's just like a brief moment of her so I really do I really I just wanted to say that I really have come to love Dee Dee and I love mm-hmm. what you did with her so Thank I you. just wanted to throw that out there I yeah. appreciate that that's great yeah there's one quote Amy you'll have to help me out by Dee Dee where she just says something like um oh what was it uh oh my gosh I'm blanking now I'm panicking. <laughs> it's just probably okay. something ironic about I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> it'll, it'll come to you later. It'll, it'll, yeah, it'll come be to way me later. later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In a month, you'll get an email from me and it'll just say, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is what I meant. And you'll be like, yeah. Block. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you think um, I would be able to remember something, but no. <laughs> uh, but again, speaking of some of your characters, there's, there, I mean, the very the classic like one of the most well-known lines from king of the hill is that's my purse i don't know you (laughs) and i know you did the the instructor who who like told bobby don't be afraid yell it (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) that was one of my favorite um little characters yeah yeah that was every every episode i would always do you know one of my my recurring characters at least, and then probably like two to three other voices. And they were just, you know, sometimes they were nothing. They were like a line here, a line there. But mm-hmm. then sometimes they were like that, and they were really fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. It's a classic it line. Everybody loves it. <laughs> it is. It's like, but there's that one that, there's a line that Nancy says, truth is like sunshine. We, I used to think it was good for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's such like, a good one. Such a good line. <laughs> I love, I love, Nancy has so many good lines and and she'll deliver them in such a way where like, well, this is just fact. Like people used to think the sun was good for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Or yeah, just that Doppler radar quote, radar quote too. Like it's the same thing, Shug. <laughs> <laughs> the Shug. Me, my good, that, um, that episode, I think, Brendan Fraser was in that episode. The Doppler radar one. Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser wasn't he in that episode about the Doppler radar? I'm not sure. We haven't gotten to that one yet. Oh, okay. (laughs) That just reminded me of like I thought he was so handsome and I was so surprised to meet him. Yeah. I walked in and I was like, stuck my hand on him. I went, hi, I'm Brendan. I mean, I'm Ashley. He gets that all the time. He, he gave me such a funny look. He was just like, "Ah, oh, come on!" <laughs> no, he, was, he was totally polite. He was totally yeah. polite. Was so yeah. Your name's Brandon too. Yeah, <laughs> me too. We're the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that. Um, there were so many celebrity guest stars on that show. Was there anyone else that stands out to you? I know there were so many. Uh, I know there were so many. I'm uh, Mary Kay Place. Oh yeah, we were just her. talking about her. Uh, Brad Pitt. Yeah. Uh, but I knew Brad from the movie that we did together, so mm-hmm. that was kind of like, oh fun, you know, I guess to see him again. Oh mm-hmm. nice. That was fun. Yeah. That's nice that <laughs> Brendan Fraser was more like nerve wracking than Brad Pitt. I bet yeah. Brad Pitt doesn't get <laughs> totally. that a lot. Well, yeah, and when I when I first met Brad, he was not famous yet, so it what well, it wasn't. Got it. You know, I, I it was easier to assert your authority, yes. <laughs> I was, the well, dominance. I was just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston too. She was on when they were yeah. still married. So, yeah, she was. 
sorry. There was that's all right. No, that's okay. I mean, we, after we wrapped up season two, I went back and just wanted to kind of make a short list of all the guest stars. And then it it ended up being like, like a full page of just names. (laughs) And that was just season two. So yes. There's a ton. I mean, it's, there was a, I think amongst the writers, there was sort of that feeling of like pressure to get these names instead of just getting actors. Like, Mm -hmm. no one even can see these people. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But that was, that was what Fox wanted. So that's what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's there are some episodes where we'll be like, "Was there a guest star?" And you look, and it's like, "Oh, uh, you know, who's who's the gentleman from Chips?" Oh Eric my Estrada. God, Eric Estrada! Er- yeah, it's yeah. like Eric Estrada played a judge at this beauty competition, like judge yeah. number two. And it's like, yeah. what? Why didn't he have like a whole episode? <laughs> They're just squeezing people in. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's interesting. Yeah, I remember that. I remember Chips. Yeah. Coming in, I was like, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> hi. That's actually another episode I love, the beauty pageant one, because I love that, you know, Peggy tries to convince Nancy, like, oh, well, maybe we should make it more about, like, brains instead of bleach blonde hair. And Nancy's like, you mean women like me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? She just right. calls her out, and I'm like, Yes. yes. <laughs> that one's <Yeah>. good. <laughs> good on you. You know what you're doing, Peggy. It's yeah. not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I was curious about, you know, Nancy famously always says shug. And I, it's become a daily part of my vocabulary. I uh-huh. call everyone shug. So <laughs> yeah. was that something like that was inspired or was it in the script or? No, I came up with it. On, oh. I came up with it on the on the first episode, nice. and I feel like it um, it helped launch Nancy in yeah. the minds of the writers because it it it's one word, but it says so much about her. Truly, and so they went away and they ran with it. They took that with every script, and it, my character grew from that. So, oh, that's really so interesting. Does. Her. her well, I, of course, I can't remember what we were just reading yesterday. Oh, it was some kind of fan fiction, but I think we were just talking about Shug and just there's something so Texas about Nancy between her big blonde hair and her, yeah. the cadence of her voice and Shug. And it's just, it's just, it really paints a picture of just like that word and like her hair and everything. It really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shug. <laughs> I love it with the pluralized shug. That happens sometimes. Go, okay, shugs. Yeah. Shug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Doug Tree came up with that. I was like, really? That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, you know, is there, was there, a, so we know that you're down for a reboot. So we've yeah. got you on the list. So yeah. we're gonna be sending this list to whoever. We're gonna just send it to Fox. I don't. Know. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Got another one. It's just written in crayon. It's just like they said they would do it. <laughs> Please. Please. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fox at gmail dot com. I'm sending it right now. <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to get as many people on board, and then we'll send it to Fox dot com. <laughs> or their PO box, whatever they have. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. PO box. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we wanted to say thank you so much for coming on the show sure. and talking with us. This has been such a treat for us and I know our listeners are going to be very stoked to hear from you. Great. I had a great time. It was lovely talking to you guys. So grateful. So glad. Thank you so much. You're yes. welcome. And let's yeah. keep our, our fingers crossed for that reboot. Fingers crossed, Shug. Oh, Let's do this. Right. Thanks, Shugs. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Have a Bye. great day. All right, you too. Thanks. Wowie! <laughs> oh, holy hell, Can y'all. Can you believe it?
because I can't. <gasps> I still can't believe it. It, it, it <laughs> I will also mention that I, you know, we, we, Jackie said we had been talking about this for like, uh, you know, a solid two weeks prior. So it's, it was the only thing I could think about for about at least two weeks. And <laughs> after it was done, I immediately took a three hour nap. <laughs> It's like, I am so exhausted. I got to take a nap. <laughs> I know. I finally had breakfast. Yeah. At like four. 4.30. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. So highlights of that interview. Um, I, I love hearing that she, you know, she came up with Suge. Yes. Just like how Kathy and Jimmy came up with Ho oh, Yeah. And how like, th- you know, their creativity and their talent really, and how she mentioned um, the just saying Suge really like implanted Nancy into the writer's mind. And yeah. as you mentioned, Jackie, I think you mentioned it like it's such a classic, you know, it, it really makes a classic view of Nancy like a, you know, debutante Texas woman. Mm-hmm. Texan? Yeah. Texan woman. There we go. That's it. Texan, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't need too much. Like just the the big beautiful blonde hair, the sultry southern dialect, and then the cherry on top, Suge. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know who that character is. Mm-hmm. It's she really brought it to life. I know it's crazy. She mentioned um, that she had originally auditioned for Luann, and I I'd be curious to hear what her version of Luann sounded like. I know if we only had the bravery to ask. Yeah. <laughs> only I wouldn't. Yeah. No, I was too. I would not want to. I was too scared to ask her to say shook. Thank I know me said. too. I know me too. I was like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> but I was trying to picture like if anyone else, I don't, I can't imagine Nancy by anyone else. I mean, right. I, like, of course we, no nancy as nancy but mm-hmm. man she her nancy is just so good i, I can't imagine anyone else i know, I know. so uh, you know i really love that i love that you know again we've got she wants a reboot baby so yes let's do it and i'm still i uh, I'm still crossing my fingers for the thruple situation. <laughs> yeah, even though <laughs> she wasn't as on board as she we are, but <laughs> <laughs> not at all. She really wasn't. <laughs> I guess that's okay. like, I guess that's a uh, kind of an. I was thinking about it afterwards. <laughs> like, I guess that's kind of an odd thing. Like, twenty years after, like this show starts, um, and you're just talking to people who love it, and they're just like. Do you think like Nancy would still be in a thruple? <laughs> like what? <laughs> Why is that such a standout thing that people want? <laughs> it's just me because I think it would be hot. <laughs> I love it. I've really come to love it. Like now that I'm older, I'm just like, it works for them. It's that's it's good. It's that's how it is. It's just like uh, in Nancy boys when, you know, Nancy sleeps with Dale and she's like cleaning the sheets and she's so upset and Peggy's like, well, you know how I feel about monogamy. I'm for it. And <laughs> and Nancy just says, well, monogamy might work for you and Hank, but it doesn't work for me and Dale and John Redcorn. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, there it is. That's, yeah. come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I love that. Um, God, there was so much, you know, discussed. Uh, oh, you know, because uh, I was thinking about it, and I and I really appreciated how she said that Dale is such an innocent, even though he's so into his conspiracy theories. And it's so true. He's always in, he's like di- diving deep into all these conspiracy theories, and every single one of them is wrong. They're all wrong. Like the the true horrors of like our like the government and the world. He doesn't doesn't even think about them at all. But the ones that he is focused on are completely fake. Although we might uh, we might want to make this a whole mini so just like kind of testing out some of his theories because it turns out he was right about the beast. 
<laughs> That's true. That is true. Good because point. we have, I forget exactly how he explained it, but his description was basically what we now know as Alexa and Google. I know. I was like, shh, she'll shh. hear me. She'll hear us. <laughs> I have one in every room, so they're always listening. I know, always. Yeah, I've got one for my bedroom, and I have one literally 10 feet away from my bedroom. I I don't know. It's I've just accepted that mm -hmm. eventually we will all we we are owned by Amazon and Facebook and co. Yeah, I just like I don't even try to hide from it. I try to feed it. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm nice to it. That's the whole thing. Like I'm very polite to my Alexa. <laughs> oh my god, she heard me. <gasps> Ooh, creepy. But any no, I'm just kidding. You're really great. I try to be really nice because when the robot overlords do take us over, I want them to remember how kind I was to their um, robots. <laughs> to the robots that live in my house. Not to go off tangent, but <laughs> right. your, your Alexa is like a lot easier to be nice to. I remember like we were taking turns asking them questions one night when we were on the phone and yours you yours you ask yours to tell like a funny joke or do like a funny fart noise and it like was like sure amy how about this one how about this one and it was so funny and i tried doing that to my google i was like hey google play a funny fart noise and it ended up at a level 10 <laughs> at a level 10 blasting like an entire soundtrack of the loudest fart noises and I had to <laughs> scream I had to scream at it to shut up so many times before it did I know I will say you're you're Google you're you might be one of the first ones to go you're not very kind to it. <laughs> I know I was just like <laughs> shut up you shut up and it you couldn't idiot. hear me over how loud it was <laughs> anyway Anyway, oh my so, god. I'm so so that's one of Dale's theories that was right, but but yeah, I, I get I think like overall what she was saying is true though. I mean, in some ways the people some of those theories that are so insane that people really believe mm -hmm. I think maybe the only reason they believe them is because there's a part of them that is like so innocent or sheltered or uh, if you don't have a an understanding of how most things work then you're just anxious and <laughs> terrified of everything if you're very dumb <laughs> if you're simple Aww. in that kind of way <laughs> uh, but yeah it's true i i've never really fully used that word to describe dale innocent but it is so true yeah yeah, especially because, like, in Nancy Boys, you know, I, I keep thinking about that one because I watched it right before, you know, we chatted with her. But he he's just so, like, please, Nancy, forget. I know why you have these headaches. It's because I'm always doing something in my basement and I'm away from you. Please forgive me. And, like, putting all of the blame of his, like, which none of it is his, really. And putting it all on him. And she's just like, well... Some of it might be my fault. <laughs> and he's just like, forgive me, I don't deserve you. And she's like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I did appreciate that. But I would love to get into some of our listener comments about everybody's favorite Nancy Hicks Gribble moments. Yes. Hell yes. All right. All right. Let's see. We got, you know, there's a lot of uh, shugs in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of shugs. Um, let me see. I love, this is such a great one because I never really think about it. But uh, it's from Jack PRSNN, so probably Jack Person. And <laughs> it, it, uh, it's when Nancy says, they're called prosty tots. <laughs> For like the little girls that wear like trampy, oh. trampy, quote unquote clothes, prosty like tops. Like pageant girls. Yeah. <laughs> God. And I mean, 
there's um tons of why is god punishing me why shook <laughs> that we've got from why shook i know that's uh we got ill sealed uh marissa madness l griffo dank hill um spiked spiegel bones for strength city of metropolis sj crane 25 mm -hmm. all of those people oh some tribe all of them love that moment. Uh, and Candicus Rapicus. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Did you already say this by DXR underscore 30? Oh, Shug, the truth is like sunlight. People used to think it was good for you. No, <laughs> no, I didn't, but I love that one. Uh, 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 rustic official. Oh, I love Dale Shug, but in a lights on sort of way. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Now, I, there's one by Chana Hana, and I saw at least one other person reference this, but um, it just says, Nancy's brief foray into Xanax addiction. I don't remember that. Yeah, so it, it's a much later episode. It's in the much, much later seasons, and it's when her hair starts falling out. And oh. so she gets on Xan so the like the doctor gives her Xanax, Alprazolam, which is oh god, it's so good. Oh, I understand. <laughs> I understand her addiction. I mean, God, keep it away from me. But anyway, <laughs> so she gets on Xanax, but it you know she ends up talking to her mom, and it turns out she's losing her hair because she stopped having an affair with John Redcorn. Oh, so she had right. to like choose between going back to John Redcorn or going bald, and she decided to go bald which that's wow. some pretty yeah i would have been like another well. testament to yep. nancy really it, it it's easy for us to think like oh maybe she puts herself first sometimes but it's just another example now that we're talking about it more that she's of her putting other people her family her husband mm -hmm. her marriage ahead of mm -hmm. herself and her looks oh my god Yep. And then Seth Scobe says, I'm addicted to these pills. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yep. <laughs> That's so wild. It reminds me of that episode of the, there's one episode of the Golden Girls where Betty White's character, um, Rose? Sophia. Rose, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, Sophia, Dorothy, Blanche, Rose. Uh, <laughs> Rose is addicted to opiates. Oh. And she has to go to rehab, and by the end, she's like, this is something I'm going to struggle with my entire life. It, it's like, it doesn't just go away. And then it's never mentioned again in another episode. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just went away. <laughs> and then it just went away. And it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything was fine. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Nintari Wizard says, you just take that lie and wrap it around you like a warm blanket. Warm blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Crum dumpster. If you've never experienced the miracle of lovemaking, now might be the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the miracle of lovemaking. Um, Alja, Al, 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 Algrabowski, Algrabowski. Mm. Mention your home was destroyed and get a free five pound bag of onions. <laughs> I think that was the same exact. <laughs> episode two. <laughs> oh this one's so good chris uh cxk uh i don't want to die i just want to report the weather <laughs> he said she sounds so weird right there and she's and it's such a good uh what incredible voice acting from ashley gardner in that scene where they're surrounded by the fire and she's just like sweating profusely and Oh, it's so good. So good. So She's good. screaming like, oh my God, we're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was actually just uh, flipping through our Instagram earlier mm -hmm. and there was a great clip. Hold on. Let me see if I could find it. It was. Uh... Oh, but oh while God. you're looking that up, I'm going to yeah, do you... this one because this one kills me. So this one's from Grits Boy and it's from Night and Deity when. Um, the the woman exterminator comes to rainy street to get rid of the pigeon problem and 
you know, Dale is like obsessed with her and, you know, very vocal about how hot she is. So, you know, Nancy's all freaked out. She's like, this is how an affair starts. So she goes to work with Dale and she, and, uh, Grit's boy says from nights and De- night and deity, when she goes to work with Dale, this is what you do. And she's like holding a <laughs> shotgun and he's just like trying to blast away. <laughs> She's just like, ah, screaming as, like, he's blowing up gopher holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm pretty sure, I, of course, I can't find it now, but I'm pretty sure it was by an account called West Arlen Sucks, maybe? Uh-huh. And it was just a clip of the video where uh, Dale possibly gets rabies and goes out of his mind and he like breaks into his own home in the night to steal groceries and like are like a roast a meatloaf or something roasting in the oven and nancy's in bed with john redcorn <laughs> and they hear a crash and they come into the kitchen and dale is just out of his mind just hissing at them like <laughs> and nancy's just they're like he's insane so he's not maybe processing what he's seeing which is the two of them in their night gown or underwear and uh and nancy's just like dale you need help shook and he just <laughs> hisses at her and jumps out the window <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to play that but i can't of course i can't find it but it was just so good <laughs> everybody go look that one up <laughs> yeah good luck finding it yeah <laughs> all right that's all i have for the listener comments how about you Pretty much that's all I have. I mean, there were so many, but uh, uh, like uh, I want to say at least a third of them just said Shug or <laughs> Oh Shug. I know. And, <laughs> and I mean, what what more is there to say? Oh Shug. Oh Shug. <laughs> Thank you everyone for submitting your listener comments in a massive Massive thank you to Ashley Gardner for being so kind and generous and speaking to us and, you know, just <laughs> thanks. I mean, what again, what else can we say except for thanks, Shug? Thank you so much. And now when we show up to that swinging Hollywood King of the Hill <laughs> reboot party and <laughs> the, the writers like let us in and we like pretend to be friends with them. Now it's not just gonna be Kathy and Jimmy who's like hey it's also gonna be like Ashley Gardner and then we're gonna like be like double fuck you writers <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna run over to Kathy and Ashley we're gonna be like hey guys hey girls what's up what's up you again oh my god yeah <laughs> no I don't know those nerds fuck them <laughs> no <laughs> ew gross. no just just kidding just kidding are we fully recognize how wonderful the writers are on that show and everyone just raves about them (laughs) of course god (laughs) i just want to make that clear it's so funny to make that joke but (laughs) i can't wait to actually interview a writer i mean everyone just talks about how it was like the best writing job they've ever had it's just incredible oh god one one interview at a time that one I think I'm good for the rest of the year. (laughs) I know. Oh, my God. So intense. All right, everyone. Listen, we love you. We hope you enjoyed this extra, extra, extra special episode. Again, thank you, Ashley Gardner. Thank you to everybody who listened. And until next time. Well, just real quick, let's get it. Get our shit together and get this reboot happening. We've got Ashley Gardner on board and Kathy and Jimmy. All right. All right. Just keep that in our minds. And yes. somebody figure out how to do that, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Until next time. Via Condios. Okay. Oh. And how do I stop recording? Ah, stop. Okay. All right. We're done recording. All right. And now I'm going to stop recording now.